With the technology that we have at our fingertips and the access to information via the web, yeah, it's surprising to me how many people still just openly accept certain narratives that are put out there by mainstream media. <laughs> You're crazy. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? So once again, the George Floyd Memorial in Manchester has been vandalised by some young 17-year-old kid. He came out in the middle of the night and sprayed an offensive word over it. And um, it's been covered up now. He's been arrested for vandalism. And I think that it got called a racially motivated um, at, uh, vandalism simply because of the word that he wrote on the memorial. Now, I don't know why he chose to do it. And to be honest with you, it's not the first time it's been vandalised in such a way. And in my opinion, I think that some of the kids that are doing it are doing it for, for jokes and it's a dare thing. It's like, oh, I dare you to go and do it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, but that's neither here nor there. What prompted me to do this video today is more the case of why, or should I say, is more the case of the responses that I saw to the article that was posted on Facebook, right? And what it, <laughs> what kind of like triggered me was, um, that's my snowflake moment, if you want to call it that, is looking through the responses, yeah, the comments, right? Talking about George Floyd and what he did and what he didn't do. Again, it made me start to think about narratives and how people are so easily influenced and so easily um, swayed or persuaded or convinced. And I can only put it down to an, uh, uh, their own, what I could say, internal biases. You know what I mean? And... So what I mean is this, yeah, George Floyd is no hero, right? I granted that. And the only reason why people were even, or the only reason why he even got labelled as a kind of hero or martyr or some dumb sh like that was because of a vicious woman called Candice Owens, who her job is to, uh, her job is basically is to demise or diminish black people. Yeah, and even though she's a black woman herself, the only time she ever comes out into the social media is when she wants to talk, is to criticize black people for this, that, and the other. But it's not about her today. You can watch that video. I'll put a link up here somewhere, right? But at the end of the day, she came out with this whole speech about, oh, he's not a this and he's that and the other, and she did some research on him, right? And what it is is that George Floyd had a criminal record, right? Now, for many people, I'd think that they should know that in America, they have a legal system where if you can't afford to pay your bail, you will spend a few days in jail until your until your next process has come up. So if you get arrested, yeah, you get you go through the process, stamp your name and all that, blah, 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 blah. You get offered the, uh, an option. You can either pay your bail, which could be £500, could be $1,000, could be whatever. If you can't afford that, then you have to wait for the next process in jail. Right, so I think it's your sentencing or whatever it is, whatever the process is, right? So, and what it is is that a lot of black people in America can't afford that bail, so they end up spending the few days in jail, right? This is not the same as being arrested and going to prison, by the way, right? Or being convicted and going to prison, should I say, right? Now, when you look at George Floyd's record, as they call it, because what they were saying, because in the comments, and this is what made me laugh, in the comments, all you saw was, oh, we should paint over it. George Floyd weren't no hero. Oh, George Floyd put a gun to his woman's head, uh, a gun to his wife's um, stomach. And he was a criminal. He had, he was like, he was high on meth. And he was this and he was that. And he was this and he was that, right? And for me, it was like, I'm kind of like going off track here, but I had to get this in, right? For me, this is the problem. Because at the end of the day, that narrative had nothing to do with what happened to him. You understand me? Yeah. He was killed, right, by a police officer that nailed on his neck, yeah, for eight and a half minutes or eight minutes and something seconds, whatever it is, right? And because of that kneeling on his neck, he died. 
Everybody saw it. Everybody witnessed it. We all saw it with our own two eyes. It was captured. It went around the world. The question, and, I, and what it is, not the question, and the point should be, or what I should, or what I would argue is that the focus should be on the police brutality. That's what kicked off the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah, the fact that in America, people were arguing, or people have said that had they not have caught that on camera, right, more than likely, more than likely, because it happens more often than you'd think, the police officer could have got away with that, yeah, by arguing that he was X, Y, Z, right? But because the evidence is clear as day and you can't deny it, then obviously he's going to get arrested and he's going to get processed, right? But again, the whole story should be based around um, the police brutality and what the cop did, not what George Floyd has done 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Right? And for me, this is what, when I was going through the comments, this was what kind of like aggravated me. Because again, all you saw is people arguing, well, he should not, he did this and he was, he was no hero and he's no martyr. I get that. No one said he was. Right? But again, it was because in the comments, they all focused on, a lot of the people, should I say, um, all focused on what George Floyd did. And I left a comment now in which I had to say, look, at the end of the day, this is a deflect, right? You've seen a man brutally get killed and then you want to talk about what he did 10 years ago. Deflection. You understand what I'm saying? And for me, this is... And for me, this just goes to show how powerful mainstream media and influencers yeah, can be on the average person. Because the average person don't research nothing. They just see what they want to see and if it suits their bias, yeah, then they'll run with it. And the reason why it's an issue for black people in this country or black people in general is that the mainstream media are run by, guess who? Majority white folk. And a lot of those white folk who are still in charge, the CEOs and the guys at the top, they still come from a generation where black people aren't shit to them. You know what I mean? And it makes good entertainment story, and it keeps up the it keeps up the narrative, and it keeps up the um, the the what's the word the portrayal of black people being of a certain ilk or a certain manner or a certain way. You know, they're all lazy and they're all thieves and they're all no good drug dealers and this that and the other. This keeps up that narrative, right? And people and like I said, because when I was going through the comments, I just saw that, and I think I just thought to myself, why don't people do some research? You know what I mean? And find out for themselves. Because when I looked into when I looked into um, what George Floyd has allegedly done, right? It is true that he did spend um he has been to jail before. But then when you actually look at why he went to jail, right, in this country you'd get a slap on the wrist for that. Yeah. And he got caught with I think on a, there were for, for most of the time she was arrested it was for drug offenses yeah but it was a gram so he's been caught with a little bit of drugs on him he's probably gone out for the he's gone out gone out like anybody else for the weekend or f for a night out on the town like anybody else yeah and got caught with some drugs on him yeah now obviously i wouldn't have to remind people that black people in America get arrested at a supremely higher rate than white people for, for the same thing or even less, right? So let's throw that in there. And um, so what else did he get arrested for? Oh, yeah, he got arrested for one thing, for um, not responding to a police officer, right? And then there's the accusation that he put a gun to his um, baby mama's pregnant uh, belly, right? That, there's no proof of that. There's no evidence to prove that one bit. Now, I can't say it happened or it can't. I can't say it happened or it didn't happen. But what I can definitely say is that no one has any substantial, tangible evidence to prove that or to back up that claim. So again, it's one of those, you're basing that on bias. You could argue that I'm basing it on bias to say that he didn't, right? But you can't prove it. And I've always found that when you ask someone um a question or someone makes a claim right especially as i've been doing my videos when i make claims that i think that are logical 
yeah, people always tell me the first thing I get thrown at me is, well, you can't prove it, prove it. So I'm going to do the same, yeah? You can't prove that he put a gun to that woman's head, so you can't say that he did. Or so not, not to her head, to her stomach, <laughs> sorry. So you can't say that he did. And what else? And the other claim, the other wild claim is that he was high on mess when he got arrested. And I would argue, so what? Yeah, so what? That doesn't justify, does that justify the cop doing what he did? Because he was high on meth? How many times have you seen a person in the street drunk as rats? got into a fight and did it, did it, yeah? If a cop decided that because he was drunk, he's gonna beat him up and to, uh, almost beat him to death, is that justifiable? No, of course not. Are you gonna say the cop was out of bounds for beating up someone who was drunk? Of course you are. You know what I mean? You're not gonna go and drag up what they did 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like, and again, it's one of those things about the whole narrative. And like I said, this video was prompted by that, the whole narrative thing. And it's again the same like with Black Lives Matter and how people are now, you know, every time you see it on the news and or you had someone has a conversation about Black Lives Matter, all you hear coming out of people's mouths, oh, they're Marxist terrorist thugs that just want to vandalize this and want to go cause mayhem and destroy people's property and you know what I mean, rape and pillage and steal and riot and da da da. And you're like, and I'm like, how did that happen? How did black people protesting for injustices against themselves turn into turn them into rioters and looters? You know what I mean? Considering it was most, and considering that the most of the people doing the rioting and looters weren't black. <laughs> but anyway, that was my rant for the day. You know what I mean? I just wanted to get it off my chest, get it out of my head, right? Because it just kind of like bothered me and I thought I'd record it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, you know what I mean? Are people still too easily influenced and swayed by mainstream media and will fall into any narrative that um, suits their biases? And if that bias happens to be a racist one, well. But like I said, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm out, peace. Yes, am I? Yes, am I? Yes.